example, if we look into the first uh, uh, rule of this uh, of this grammar B or B. So, for the sake of our understanding, so we are writing it as B. Uh, so, B producing uh, B 1 or B 2. So, like this. Now, so we will assume that the true and false transfer points for the entire expression B is known. So, it is part of, so B is part of uh, some uh, bigger expression like say, uh, so let us uh, uh, do it like this. Say if some Boolean expression, then I have got a block of statements S1 else S2, where S1 is a block of statements and S2 is another block of statements. Now, if you look into the parts tree for this, so it will be something like this S producing if then a portion of the parts tree which will correspond to B, then there will be a portion of the parts tree which corresponds to S1 and there will be a portion of the parts tree where I will have this S2 fine. Now, it is assumed that when I am doing this reduction, so if B is true, it will so, so, since uh, all these reductions have already been done, so this S1 and S2's position in the uh, 3 address uh, code file, so they are known, is not it? Because by, by that time the codes have already been generated, so I can very easily tell what is the offset of the code S1, what is the offset of the code S2 in the full uh, 3 address code file, the, the file that contains the 3 address code, what are the offsets of this. Uh, uh, positions. So, naturally I can assume that for this B, this B dot true and uh, B dot false. So, these two pointers where they should point to. So, that is known when I am going to do this reduction. Similarly, if I, uh, so just to extrapolate that fact. So, I, if I have got a rule like this. So, B 1 or B 2. So, we know that when I am doing this. So, for this, uh, this B. So, we already know the uh, true and false pointers for that. So, where the true and false would go. But then uh, for the now if uh, now what the situation is that if B 1 happens to be true, then since this is an OR operation. So, if this is the true branch and this is the false branch, then B 1 being true, it should follow the true branch of B and B 1. Uh, so, B 2 B is so, uh, um, Similarly, B2 being true, so it should follow the true branch of B. And similarly, if B1 is false and B2 is false, if both are false, then only it should go to the false branch. Now, it is a bit, uh, it is a bit confusing because I said that when I am doing this reduction. So, in this particular case, when I was doing this reduction, these uh, targets were known where S1 and S2 are in this file that are known. But here my B expression is not yet over. So, I do not know where the, uh, where the, so I am in the, I am actually parsing somewhere here doing the parsing at this point. So, at that time I have not reduced the S1, I have not reduced S2. So, as I, as we are looking into the numbering policy of this reduction. So, you see that these numbers that are appearing for this tree. So, they are much less compared to these numbers and these numbers. So, they have not yet been reduced. So, they are uh, that they will come later. So, naturally uh, for a single pass type of uh, operation. So, it is difficult, but uh, if we assume that my compile the, the code generation phase will be in uh, in a two pass fashion. So, in the first pass. So, you can identify all these uh, jump targets okay, for B dot true and B dot false. So, that in the second pass while generating the actual code. So, you can just uh, use those uh, say, oh, you can just use those addresses. Of course, you can do something else also that we will see for single pass compilation. So, we need to do some sort of back patching type of operation. So, that we will see later. So, for the time being it is assumed that we have got this uh, uh, whenever we are having this particular rule B producing B 1 or B 2. So, it is assumed that the true and false transfer points for the entire expression B are known. Now, if B 1 is true B is also true. So, we need not evaluate uh, B 2. So, B 1 appears to be happens to be true then B 2 need not be evaluated without evaluating B 2 also we can say that the whole expression B is going to be true. So, this is called a short circuit evaluation because we will not evaluate B 2 if B 1 is already true. 
Similarly, if B1 is false, then of course, we cannot tell anything because now need, I need to evaluate B2 also. And if uh, B2 is also false, uh, then uh, uh, then it will be, uh, then we have to uh, the, uh, follow the false label. So, uh, the way the code is uh, that uh, the um, uh, semantic actions or the syntax directed actions are written is like this that B1 dot true is made equal to B dot true. So, since you assume that we already know B dot true, so B1 dot true will be like that. But for B1 dot false, I do not know where to go. Okay. So, that way I generate a new label. So, this new label is say L1. So, B1 dot false equal to L1. Now, B2 dot true equal to B dot true, B2 dot false equal to B dot false because I will first have the code for B1, then I will have got the code for B2. So, if B1 is not true, then it has uh, gone like this. So, it has gone like this and then I will be, uh, uh, so this B2, so B, uh, at the end B2 dot false will be equal to B dot false and this B dot code is it will have the code for B1, it will have the code for B2 and then it is, but uh, in between there will be a label that will get inserted. So, here you see that B1 dot false, so we have got the label, so that will be inserted here, so B1 dot false colon, so that will be inserted, then then I will have got the code for B2 dot, I uh, will have the portion for B2 dot code. So, what I uh, the situation, the final situation for B dot code will be something like this. So, the here I will have got the code for uh, B, uh, I will have the portion for uh, B1 dot code. This is the B1 dot code and after that I will have uh, a this new label that is there. So, this new label L1 has been generated. So, this is uh, So, B1 dot false contains the label. So, this is L1, suppose the new label that is generated is L1 and after that it will be the B2 dot code will come. So, after B1 dot code this L1 will be generated, uh, this L1 label will be generated, then this B2 dot code will be generated. So, it will be uh, uh, going like this. So, this uh, after this uh, B1 dot code is over, see this label will get inserted and then this B2 dot code will be put at the end. So, so this way I can generate the code for this uh, B1 or B2. So, we can we will look into the other rules, other grammar rules for generating the code for uh, for other uh, other Boolean expression or other rules like b equal to b1 and b2. So, in that case if b1 is true, then I have to evaluate b2 also, but if b1 is false, then it is a short circuit. So, if b1 is false, so b1 dot false is made equal to b dot false, then b2 dot true is, uh, uh, so b1 dot true is a new label then this uh, b1 dot false is b dot false. So, that means it is a short circuit and then b2 dot true is uh, b dot true, b2 dot false is b dot false, then b dot code is the uh, concatenation of b1 dot code, then this particular uh, label b1 dot true colon and then b2 dot code. So, this that way I can uh, have this b1 and b2. Then not of b1 so, b1 dot true is b dot false, b1 dot false is b dot true and b dot code is equal to b1 dot code. So, no new code has to be generated, but this true and false uh, pointers, so they are to be reversed. So, wherever uh, the, the, the b1, uh, so uh, b is uh, b dot false, wherever it was going, so they, they should be, uh, they, we should go there if b1 is becoming true now and wherever it was going on B becoming true, so on B1 becoming false, we should go there. Okay. So, then B within bracket B1, so this is also very simple. So, B1 dot true equal to B dot true, B1 dot false equal to B dot false, B dot code equal to B1 dot code, so like that. Now, uh, B producing true, so this is uh, B dot code, it will generate a go to, uh, go to B dot true. So, then uh, because we know it is definitely uh, true. So, that way I do not have to evaluate anything. So, this is uh, b dot uh, b dot code will be 
So, this particular line will be generated go to B dot 2. So, B dot 2 is already known the target is known. So, it will go there. Similarly, B dot false is like this. Now, I D 1 relop I D 2. So, this will generate uh, the two statements. So, if I D 1 dot place relational operator I 2 I D 2 dot place go to B dot true. Otherwise, it will go to B dot false. So, that way this I D 1 relop I D 2 will be done. So, how does it help us in generating the uh, uh, generating code? So, this helps because I can have the short circuit of Boolean operators and all. So, I do not evaluate the complete expression and so that helps ok. In many, in many programming languages uh, you see this is helpful like see uh, suppose uh, I have got uh, this check. So, I have got an array in my program integer a 100 and at some point of time I need to check whether if a i is greater than 50 then something something. Now, uh, one problem with this type of situation is that so if this index i itself has become more than 100 the, ex the value of the expression i itself is more than 100 then uh, uh, when I'm, whenever I am trying to do this a i access so this can generate some a violation of condition ok. So, there is some runtime error may occur. So, it is a safe practice that we write like this if i less than 100 less or equal 100 and a i greater than 50 then then I have got the piece of code. Now, here you see that if i happens to be more than 100 then this uh, part itself will evaluate to false. So, I will not go into this evaluation and it will so it will not try to access some arbitrary memory location to get the value of a i. So, that way my uh, code execution is much safer ok. So, uh, so the, this is uh, uh, this is uh, to good like for this uh, short circuit of uh, this boolean expression evaluation. So, this is really helpful. However, the, the way that we are generating the code it has got problems because uh, the first thing is that it makes the scheme inherently two pass procedure because in the first pass all the jump targets will be computed and in the second pass the actual code generation will be done. So, that is uh, that is uh, required because I need to have this b dot true b dot false. So, those pointers their destinations are calculated before we generate the code. However, um, so, uh, the, so that makes it a bit cumbersome also. So, there is a modification to the grammar so that we can make it a single pass approach. So, single pass approach it can be developed by modifying the grammar a bit and introducing a few more attributes ok. So, a few new procedures and the generated code can be visualized as an array of quadruples. So, that way we can uh, uh, so that is uh, correcting some portions that some corrections can be carried out in the code that is generated. Basically, the when the jump targets uh, become known then only we, uh, we can uh, tell the address like uh, for example, if I have got a statement like if uh, some boolean expression b uh, then S1 else S2. Now, while parsing this B, so I have got at several points the B becomes true or B becomes false like that. So, at those points I need to transfer the control to either S1 or S2, but until and unless the code for B is over. So, if, if this is the file where I am writing the code for the, this three address code. So, until and unless the code for B is over, I cannot start the code for S1 and until and unless the code for S1 is over, I cannot start the code for S2. So, when, when I am at this intermediary points, I really do not know uh, this particular offsets, the offset of S1 and offset of S2 because it is all dependent on size of B1, size of S1, etc. So, uh, so, uh, I need to uh, do something so that in the first pass I can uh, uh, I can uh, take it as I can know that um, uh, the offset values ok. In the second pass I do that. However, in the, the single pass uh, procedure, so we have to modify something uh, so that we can uh, we can generate the code. So, how is it being done? 
So, the attributes that we are talking about new attributes apart from that b dot true and b dot false. So, we have got a true list and a false list for every boolean expression. So, b dot true list it is the list of locations within the generated code for b at which b is definitely true. So, as I was telling that if this is the portion of uh, this is the parse tree uh, for b part. So, this is the parse tree for b suppose at these points in the parse tree the b expression is definitely true. So, we put all these locations in a list called b dot true list. Similarly, there may be a few locations where b is definitely false. So, they are put onto the list b dot false list. So, in b dot true list it is the list of locations within the generated code for b at which b is definitely true and once defined all these points should transfer control to b dot true. So, when when I am uh, generating the, the parse tree for b, so at that time I do not know what is b dot true and b dot false targets, but after some time they will become defined. So, uh, for example, that if then else statement that then part and else part the statements they will come after some time of parsing. So, at that point, so this uh, uh, jump targets will be known and for the, uh, for the non terminal b. So, we have note down the true list where the all these uh, points of uh, all these points at which the b is true. So, that uh, that values have been kept. So, at all those places we can uh, replace the address uh, the jump address that can that was left as blank at that point. So, they can be filled up with uh, this uh, um, this jump uh, this new address which is uh, this b dot true or the address of s 1 in if then else statement. Similarly, b dot false list. So, the it, it contains the list of locations within the generated code for b at which b is definitely false and once defined all these points should transfer control to b dot false. So, they should so I should have the all controls transfer to b dot false. So, all these points I can do some correction in the target code that is generated. So, that uh, they are rectified and now they contain the address of b dot false as their jump target. Some more functions are also necessary like make list i. So, it creates a new list with a single entry i. So, and, and so this is an index into the array of quadruples. So, some slide earlier we have said that uh, generated code is visualized as an array of quadruples. Okay. So, here also we say that this uh, make list i. So, this is an index into that array of quadruples. Then merge list of list 1 and list 2, it returns a new list containing list 1 followed by list 2. So, the merging of two list. Then back patch list target. So, this will insert the target as the target level into each quadruple pointed to by entries in the list. So, this will be, so this list is containing all the places where this jump targets are not yet uh, filled up. Okay. Now, for them, so if we have if we come across the correct target with which the, the to which these all these control should jump to, so the, that is say that is called target. So, all those uh, locations they will be filled up with the value of target. And there is a function called next quad that will return the index of next quadruple to be generated. So, many a time we will need to know what is the address of the next uh, piece of code that will be generated. So, the or the next quadruple of code that will be generated. So, that is by this next quad function. So, the grammar that we will have now is a modified version b producing b or m b, b producing b and m b not of b within bracket b id develop id true false and epsilon m producing epsilon. So, this is a so in this particular case you see what has been done we have introduced a new dummy variable m. Okay. So, we have introduced a new dummy variable m. So, which we call uh, uh, and the this, this is dummy because ultimately I am replacing it by m producing epsilon. So, it does not have any effect on the uh, on the m. Okay. So, it does not have any effect on uh, on the grammar, but this will be useful for knowing some addresses and uh, um, uh, modifying the um, proper values uh, inserting proper jump targets and all. So, so, this m it has got an attribute called m dot quad that can hold index of the 
of a quadruple. So that so you, you can say m dot quad equal to some quadruple value. So that will tell us uh, this, uh, that will that will hold the in that can uh, be uh, assigned some index of the of a quadruple. Now, how is it going to be used? So it can be it may be clear by looking into say this particular rule b producing b1 or m b2. Okay. So before this execution of b2 starts, reduction m producing epsilon has already taken place. So if you look into the parts tree, so this will be like this. So b producing uh, this b1. Then M, sorry, B one or then M and this B two, and this M produces epsilon. So this is the parts tree part. Now, as you as, as we have seen previously by that number, the policy of that numbering of those reductions. So first, these reductions will be numbered. Then this reduction will be numbered, and then only these reductions will be numbered. So before this B2 reductions are made, the B2 reductions are numbered or B2 reductions take place. Just before that, this M producing epsilon, so this reduction will take place. So uh, since this M producing epsilon is not going to give me any new code, so this M dot quad, which is the address of the uh, so I can I can make that uh, it can hold the index of a quadruple. So if there is a function called the next quad, so that gives me the uh, index of the next quadruple to be generated. So so far we have generated till the, say up to this point we have generated say 105 quadruples. So uh, this next quadruple is 106. So what we can do is that we can uh, make this m dot quad equal to 106. So that will mean that uh, that that will be exploited later for uh, correcting some uh, some addresses uh, in the uh, table. So how is it being done? So let us uh, let us see in the successive slides. So this is the full set of rule that we have. So we have got uh, this uh, uh, first rule is uh, B1 uh, B producing B1 or M B2. So then, uh, what we do? So if, uh, at this point, so B1 and B2, they are true list and false lists. They are known, and this M, it has got the quad. So as I was telling that at this point, so I have got see this B1 or M B2. So this was the situation, and B1 true list has got all these points. B1 false list has got this point, B2 true list has got this point, and B2 false list has got this crossed point. Say, so this true list and false list have been done. Now, with uh, so what will happen if B1 is uh, false? So if B1 is false, so I have to uh, come to the B2 part. So and B2's evaluation starts at a portion when B1's evaluation ends, and B2 evaluation starts at this point, and that is. Uh, um, uh, that will be so before that this m producing epsilon so this will be uh, done and for this m producing epsilon the corresponding uh, action that we take is m dot quad equal to next quad so this m has got a special attribute uh, quad okay so which holds the uh, index of the next quadruple to be generated uh, in the code generation process so this m dot quad is next quad. So, in this particular case, so it will hold the start address of computation of B2. So, this way, uh, so there, so this back patch B1 false list with m dot quad. So, all this false list, all these positions, they were, they are target was, uh, targets were not known. Now, uh, so once this m dot quad is known, so all those values should be uh, back patched with m dot quads. So all those uh, blank locations they can be filled up with the value of m dot quad. Then b dot true list. So it, it is a so for b dot uh, for b b's true list is the collection of all true points of b1 and all true points of b2. So this is the true list of uh, b1 uh, of b. So it merge list. B1 true list and B2 true list. So merge list means it will merge the two lists and uh, get the overall thing. And B false list is B2 dot false list because uh, B1's false list have already been backpatched with start address of B2. So it will it will branching from here to here in the execution. And then 
B 2 is uh, uh, false list. So, that will be uh, that will be so B is false list will be same as B 2 is false list. Similar type of rule can be uh, made for this and. So, B 1 and M B 2. So, we backpatch B 1 true list with M dot quad. B true list is made equal to B 2 dot false list and B false list is made merge list of B 1 false list and B 2 false list. So, this is just uh, the um, uh, complementary version of this uh, OR rule, the AND rule. Now, NOT of B 1, B producing NOT of B 1. So, B dot true list equal to B 1 dot false list and B dot false list equal to B 1 dot true list. Similarly, B producing within bracket B 1. So, this is true list and false list remain unchanged. B producing true. So, this will be uh, this will have this uh, this will uh, this gener generate a code and this uh, at that point the expression is definitely true because the expression itself is uh, being reduced by the rule B producing true, true being the constant uh, token for this uh, uh, is the constant value for the boolean expression true. So, that is uh, this emit uh, go to so, this this has to be filled up. Okay. So, where to go we do not know because once this uh, target will be known uh, then only this can be filled up. So, this way it is left like this, but before that this next quad function has been called. So, this is a point where the expression is definitely true. So, that uh, so the sorry the so wherever this go to is generated. So, this particular quad. So, if it is quad number say 100. So, this this is a place where I have to do the correction. Okay. So, this uh, make list next quad. So, it will make a list with 100 as one of the entry. Now, there may be several other uh, points that will come where B is definitely true. So, all these all these will be put into this chain okay. the, and they will be that will be called B dot true list and then they will be backpatched with uh, the when this uh, go to target will be known. So, all these uh, places will be filled up say, say the target becomes a 200. So, I will be writing 200 here in that case. So, the code will be corrected. Then ID 1 relope ID 2. So, here also I have got the situation like B dot true list equal to next quad, B dot false list equal to next quad. Then emit if ID 1 dot place relational operation ID 2 dot place go to and then again this part is not known. So, this will be filled up later when this B dot true list uh, this uh, B dot true will become true be available. So, they will be backpassed with that. Okay. So, this way we can have uh, this uh, this uh, boolean uh, uh, grammar rules for them we can have the corresponding actions. Now, so we can we will look into this example. So, this x greater than y or z greater than k and not of r less than s and this is the corresponding uh, grammar that we have uh, corresponding parts tree that we have. So, we initially have this b and since or is of least prefer precedence, so it is divided by this rule B producing B or M B to M B. Then after that, so this or is ID relope ID. So this uh, B, this first B is ID relope ID. So this is X greater than Y. Then the second one is uh, now this M M is epsilon. Now uh, so this. Uh, now this uh, so so now this uh, so this uh, since all is of uh, the least precedence uh, so this 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 is the second part of this or this whole thing is the second part of this or and it has again had got two things like and not and etc so first this uh, before the and so this z greater than k so that part is generated so b and m b that is generated and this for, from this b we get id relope id and that is z and k m giving epsilon and then this uh, b is gives me not of b. So, not of b and b giving me id relope id. So, r less than s. So, this way we can generate uh, the we, we can write down the parts tree for this particular um, uh, example string uh, using the boolean grammar. So, we will look into the code generation for this in the next class.